Mark Furman joins me now. He's a former LAPD detective and currently lives in Idaho. So, Detective, if you were running this on point, what would you be doing right now? Well, Jesse, I, I would probably be doing exactly what they're doing right now. I, I am actually uh, fairly impressed when I go back and actually see exactly how fast they put together a task force. And, and many times, smaller agencies um, are hesitant to be second guessed so they don't bring in other agencies or or the feds or the state police because they don't want to be, uh, you know, criticized or or anything else, and that's not the fact here. So, I'd like everybody to understand that almost every serial killer investigation that we know that's famous starts out in large agencies that don't get any handle on it until victim seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, do you it's think not this is a serial is killer a on the agency. loose, it's, detective? I, I would say no. Um, just as the chief of police said in the press conference, and, and you, you stated in your monologue, we have a targeted uh, crime here, and they're not going to lay out exactly why it's targeted. I think the chief of police was quite uh, candid, dancing around the question a little bit. Um, he gave an answer that they are looking at it as a targeted offense because of the totality of the circumstance. Well, of course, that would cover anything and everything. So they are looking at this as a targeted offense. And a targeted offense means that the suspect knows and sought out one or more victims in that house specifically. So do you believe that this that dog that was filleted like a fish is connected to this quadruple homicide? I, I think that we, we could pass over that and put that in the file to get to sometime. But they need to stay on point, and I think they've stayed on point fairly well on this. Now they've turned to the public. Uh, blood spatter analysis, you brought it up. Uh, the FBI's uh, experts are there. Now, blood spatter analysis can tell us a lot of things. It can tell us the progression of the wounds, which victim was first, second, third, and fourth. It can tell us if the, if the suspect is right or left-handed, and if the attack uh, uh, occurred when both people are standing, sometimes the height. We've got shoe prints that are no doubt either there, whether they were obliterated by the suspect during the battle, the fight, the murder, or it was people that came in after the fact. All right, so let me ask you there this. As a, as a former detective, so, you, have, you could possibly find the height, and you could possibly determine right or left-handed, and you may get a footprint. So maybe you got a type of shoe, size of shoe. Does that narrow this thing down enough to give you a clue about who you're chasing? Well, the first thing is, is they're not going to tell us what they what they come up with in any of that. Like the average shoe size for a man is ten and a half. Uh, so you, you know you can you can separate things into categories, uh, and if they're lucky enough, they'll be able to find some forensic evidence, even if they can reduce that just to blood typing, um, even though the DNA is not in the system. So. They are collecting information that might point them towards a suspect or be actually useful when they actually have a suspect or a person of interest for an interrogation. And these are all small items. And, and another one that I, I'm really hopeful for is if the suspect cut himself in these attacks because a couple of the victims um, supposedly had some defensive wounds and in knife knife attacks that would most uh, most often be a cut to the hands or the forearms because they're putting their hands up to stop the blow of the knife. Yeah. If the suspect cut himself controlling the victim with his weak hand, uh, there's a chance he might have struck himself. So they're working on all these things that, you know, in most cities you'll never hear about in the news. And in yeah. big cities, well, this happens. I mean, all not, the but time. this is a small town, and we get it. But I mean, the whole country's following this because it's four victims. It's a knife attack. It's just in a small town. Everyone is scared at that school. Everyone's terrified at the Pacific Northwest that there's a serial killer with a knife on the loose. So 
I hope they wrap this up quick because there's a lot of woods area and, and he, this guy could be anywhere or guys. And uh, well, I, I think, think they're doing a good job so far, but we got we got They got to catch a break. A detective, I got to run. Thank you so much. OK, you bet. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.